Hello everyone, today we are going to watch the Thai drama together with me. The next chapter, after all the ups and downs of last season, Cole and Nun finally managed to fall in sweet, sweet love. In this one, both men enter society. Next, we'll take a look at the love between the two. Has there been some changes due to the pressure of life? The warm and fuzzy little life has officially begun, with the thoughtful Cole waking up early to prepare a nutritious breakfast for Nun. Cole ties her apron and gently wakes Nun. However, the sleeping nun is less interested in breakfast as the cooking coal is more appealing. So, early in the morning, the two began a campaign. Oh, hey, the fantasies are over. These are our fantasies. Their real life is Cole's daily bedwetting, struggling to even get breakfast ready for nun, and being lucky to even make it to work on time. Nun takes care of almost every aspect of Cole's life, squeezing his toothpaste, getting his cash ready and ironing the clothes Cole will wear today. One person holds two jobs, and Cole's daily routine consists of playing with her cell phone on different occasions. Eva is all dressed up for Valentine's Day and has a surprise for her boyfriend Kato. Fifi is concentrating on making pastries. She is much quieter in nature now and not as tomboyish as she used to be. Eva walks past Fifi and laughs unkindly at the somewhat dismal cake in Fifi's hands. After the flirting, Eva goes off to find a boyfriend. But Kato wasn't home, being the workaholic that she is. Kato's absence is quite normal and Eva has long gotten used to it. Koshiro is no longer the innocent Koshiro. He is now a young man who is addicted to music, has a very irregular daily routine, and is not very dedicated to his relationship. The only thing that can cure him is probably Fifi. After all, if he doesn't do as he's told, the next thing you know, he'll be a taster of Fifi's dark pastries. Kato is not at home, so Eva comes to work at the company. After Eva discusses her work with her leader, Mr. Fan, it's time for lunch. As soon as she leaves the house, Eva starts to freak out. Every single one of Mr. Fan's features grew on her aesthetic point, and she couldn't control the feeling of her heartbeat at all. Eva, please repeat three times you are the one with the boyfriend. Valentine's Day is naturally fueled with sweet couples everywhere, and thankfully Cole and Nun held back. Cole is browsing through her and Nun's couple posts when she suddenly sees an id that looks a lot like Nun's father, and rushes to share this interesting fact with Nun. The result is that Nun takes a look and his expression instantly freezes. It's his father's id. It didn't take long for Nun to receive a friend request from his father. Nun is panicking inside right now. Today's job didn't go so well either. Tackard punched the wrong holes himself and insisted it was a problem with the model Nun sent. Fortunately, it was only through the intervention of his superiors that the hiccup was resolved. Nun was already fuming about his father. And with all of this, he's in an even worse mood. It seems that CP is too popular is not a good thing. The apartment happens to be full of people after work in the evening. After graduation, everyone is busy with their own business, but few people are so flush with each other when they flirt with each other. Eva briefly complained that Kato's work was just too heavy. Obviously with none they are in the same company, but the gap between the two is so big. Koshiro this bar residency is so popular that people often confess their love for him. This is not it. Ferounce is the one who recently fell in love with Koshiro. Ferounce very shyly gives Koshiro the prepared gift and then highlines into oblivion. Nun came back to his room and started organizing all sorts of things. Today he's perversely forcing Cole to do it herself. Cole begins to pack with extreme reluctance, only to rummage through the ring Nun has for Cole in one fell swoop. This is a couple's ring handpicked by Nun. Today is Valentine's Day. How could a romantic Nun forget such an important holiday? After the surprise delivery, Nun is back at work packing clothes. Watching Nun's movements, Cole felt that she really had found the right person. But now the biggest problem for Nun is getting past his father. If his father finds out he's gay, his future with Cole is uncertain. In order to keep their father from getting suspicious, Nun and Cole made a special appointment with the person who manages their CP posts and told them to try to be more restrained in their future tweets. At first, the two administrators thought that Cole and Nun's relationship was in trouble and were about to be heartbroken, before realizing that it was some other force majeure. Now they come rest assured that CP fans will always be happy, as long as there are no relationship problems. After the conversation, Cole's parents also called to ask Cole if she is in a relationship with a boy. Cole dismissed it without even thinking about it. After all, family ties are pretty important too. After talking to the person in charge, the two went back home. Right now Cole is a total internet kidnapped teenager who doesn't care about anything and dumps everything on none. None is a little upset inside, but who made this his wife? Still have to be spoiled. Nun is lying in bed reading material and waiting for his fun-loving wife to come home on the way. After a long wait, Nun gets a distress call from Cole. Hearing Cole's anxious tone, Nun rushed downstairs. He had thought something big had happened, but it turned out to be that Cole didn't have the money to pay the camp fare. But Nun just gave Cole a lot of money, 
So how did it spend it so quickly? It turns out Cole went on a date with a girl, listening to Cole gently inquire if the girl on the other end of the phone had arrived home yet. None got angry. The next morning, Fifi comes to Koshiro to borrow a car. The sight of the door opening caused Fifi a moment of embarrassment. It looks like Fifi is interrupting them. Koshiro somewhat unnaturally tossed the keys to Fifi and went on to flock with Pharrell's. Also, Eva took on the task of delivering Kato today. After working so late last night, Kato's spirits aren't too good for driving. I'm afraid. Eva is such a thoughtful girlfriend. Cole's boss, Alan, catches him drinking and punishes him with no work until he sobers up. On the other hand, Nun was given a hard time by the skilled laborer, who made him do a lot of hard work, which made Nun's back ache. At lunchtime, Cole tries to give Nun a massage to ease the pain, but Nun is a little embarrassed that the cafeteria is too crowded and turns Cole down. Afterward, Alan comes over to have dinner with the two of them and gives Cole another heads up about her drinking and working. It seems that this boss is quite attached to Cole. As a result of the excellent accidental work, Mr. Fang takes Eva with him to talk about clients, and Kato's side is also appreciated by his beautiful superior, Mr. Lee, who wants to discuss the next work plan with him in detail. Coincidentally, they had an appointment at the same restaurant and the seats were adjacent. As soon as they to sit down, they start to get jealous of each other, especially Eva. What Lee always says, she says, and makes a lot of jokes. The two message each other on their cell phones with rather varied expressions. Please pay attention. You are working. After work, Nun and Cole are lounging on the couch when Fifi brings her new product for you to try out. Not to mention, it's quite tasty this time. Nun noticed some crumbs stuck to the side of Cole's mouth and cut Cole's face in his hands and wiped them for him. Fifi in the middle of the two of them, simply speechless to the extreme, at least have to respect her. Meanwhile, Koshiro and Farrells have finally come out of the room. Young people are so energetic. They don't stop for a single day. Then the group makes their way to the bar, where Koshiro is planning to make things official with Farrells, and everyone is looking forward to the pairing. Kato is late again and Eva is furious. The others at the table, long accustomed to the couple's occasional quarrels, watch the two like a play. The scene ends with Kato pestering Eva to apologize. This fight that we knew was going to end, the crowd is still having fun watching. After the play, Cole wants to go to the bathroom, but when he gets up, he bumps into a beautiful woman, though Cole only apologized politely. Cole got an interesting look in the eyes of others, especially none. When Cole came back, the look in his eyes was as if he wanted to eat Cole. Cole was left with a blank look on her face. Koshiro calls Farouz aside and asks him, with a serious face, if he wants to be his boyfriend. Farouz listened and a smile immediately bloomed on his face. Of course he does. Farouz couldn't be happier. Then, the two of them hugged each other tightly, enjoying the happy moment. I really hope that Farouz is God's true love for Koshiro because his love life is so heartbreaking. Eva carries a drunken Kato home. The man is so tired after a long day of work, but Kato still hasn't forgotten to show his loyalty to Eva. Eva smiled favorably and then Kato kissed Eva. As a result, Kato, the man steady, fell asleep. It really makes Eva laugh and cry. Cole and Nun are also back home. Listening to the sound of Cole taking a shower, Nun can hold back his hot heart and immediately rushes in to try and join Cole in the shower. Turns out it didn't take long to get in there before Cole beat it out of him. It was hard to wait for Cole to get into bed, and Nun thought to himself, I can't finally make out. As a result, Cole again says he's not interested right now. Nun is so angry that he can't get his needs met that he has to go to bed, but the restless Cole is back to playing games, the kind that keep people awake. Nun is helpless. The next day, while the two are having dinner, Nun realizes that the topic of his relationship with Cole has become one of the hot topics in Thailand. Nun was in a great panic, in which case his father was sure to call and ask again. As luck would have it, Nun's father's phone call came as soon as he spoke, in order to keep his father from finding out about his affair with Cole. Nun decides to have Cole move out for a while. Cole is very upset and gets into a fight with Nun. Nun is clear that Nun doesn't want to be open about their relationship with their parents, but that's not what Cole wants. For those who truly love each other, who would not want to have the blessing of their parents and hold hands in the sunlight brightly. So Cole's second reluctance is justified. Will Nun, who has always favored Cole, change his mind and come clean? But at the moment, Nun is so focused on how to deal with his father that he doesn't care about Cole's feelings and still packs Cole's clothes neatly. Cole also knows that he has to go this time. For a few days, Cole is staying at Koshiro's place for the time being. We are all friends and nice to each other. Cole carries his baggage, pathetically, to someone else's room. It's not nice to be thrown out. On the other hand, when Eva has time, she and Kato get together and become a sweet little couple, inseparable. However, even when they meet, they are busy with their own work. Kato feels a little guilty that he's been too busy to spend time with Eva this whole time. 
but Eva says Kato is overthinking it, and she's busy herself. Kato expresses a little bit of jealousy when he hears that Eva is going to be busy working with Mr. Fong in the evening. Again, luckily, Eva had an early response, and it didn't take long to coax him out of it. The food market was also quite busy today. Nun's dad is concentrating on picking out groceries when he runs into the fiery Cole's parents, a slightly unpleasant first meeting for the future in-laws. In their free time, Eva and Fifi chat together. Observing Eva's recent state, Fifi suggests that Eva and Mr. Fang keep their distance, or else Eva might not be able to hold on to her hand according to this trend, but Eva doesn't take Fifi's words to heart. Eva still believes in herself when it comes to loyalty. After the two chatted, Fifi returned home and rushed to return the client's calls one by one. I don't know what's going on, but I've been getting errors in my orders lately. Fifi sank back down onto the couch in chagrin, and the next second, she immediately popped back up. When did there get to be an extra person on the couch? A closer look reveals that it's Cole, the poor evicted man. Eva's work is now getting better and better, and she is able to cope with some difficult requests from clients. Mr. Fan is very satisfied with her, and often takes her with him when he meets big clients. Eva realizes after work that her best friend Nun has done such a good job, and rushes to apologize to Cole, and says she'll help Cole scold Nun so he'll learn a lesson. In order to make Eva feel better, Kato brings out a surprise that he has prepared for a long time in outing itinerary. Eva's eyes instantly lit up. It's been a while since the two of them have enjoyed the world of two. Eva was just about to get excited about discussing it with Kato when she remembered that there was someone else next to her who was struggling with love, and it wouldn't be appropriate to do that. So she went to the room with Kato to discuss it. Today is the first day without Cole, and Nun misses it so much that he can't resist making a video call to Cole. After an ambiguous conversation, Nun gets sleepy and says he'll stay with Cole, only to fall asleep first. The next day at work, Cole takes a picture of Nun sleeping last night and wants an explanation. Nun has no choice but to pamper her boyfriend when he starts acting up again. The two run into Alan downstairs and talk about Alan's ex-boyfriend. Alan's boyfriend died not long ago and Cole feels like she stirred up Alan's sadness and apologizes specifically. Alan said it's fine, and also cautioned the two that they must cherish their current relationship, or else they will only regret if they miss it. Meanwhile, Cole's parents run into Nun's mom and dad at the market, quickly switching to comedy theater mode. Cole's father teases Nun's dad as soon as they meet, and since he's been watching a lot of BL dramas lately, Cole's father is more or less reckless, which makes the male dad quite hard to deal with. This time, the meeting between the two parents still ended in failure. Koshiro inadvertently discovered Asen on one of the social media platforms. Koshiro knew that his chance to get rich was coming and added Asen's contact information. He's on Asen's airwaves, picking all sorts of fights, which makes Asen take notice of the rampaging youngster. After finishing the broadcast, Asen immediately contacted Koshiro. Of course, at this time, Asen did not know that the other party is the former Koshiro. Koshiro sees that Asen has managed to take the bait and strikes while the iron is hot making a date straight to Asen's house. The two men, masked, are soon entwined. I can't see that Koshiro is angry. Nan got a call from his father on his side, and he'll be checking in soon. Cole moved out a long time ago, and Nan is pretty confident now. But before Nan can hand up, Cole gives him a big surprise. Nan is a little alarmed by the sudden return of Cole. Nan keeps pushing Cole upward, but Cole isn't letting up, between the two pulling at each other. Nan's father arrives. Cole and Papa Nan are sitting in the living room, in an awkward atmosphere. Just through the eyes, it's clear that Nun's dad doesn't like Cole. Cole tries to strike up a conversation, both of which are disliked unmercifully by Papa Nun. Just then, Kato comes looking for Cole, and Nun cleverly makes up a random excuse to get them to leave together. This is a real relief for a bunch of people. Kato tells Cole to be more understanding. After all, Nun's father is strict and has to give Nun some time. Kato comes to Cole for ideas. He doesn't know what to say to Eva when he has to cancel his travel plans because of his work. What Kato doesn't realize is that Eva is struggling with the same problem. In the room, Nun's dad is still grilling Nun about what's going on with those pictures on the internet. Nun firmly dismisses his father's doubts, saying that he and Cole are just friends, but that didn't exactly reassure Nun's dad. Nun's father has high hopes for his only son. He told Nun not to step foot in the house again if he was gay. In the evening, the group gathers to ask Nun about today's battle. Eva can't stand the sight of Nun looking like a coward and counts Nun out relentlessly. Luckily, Kato was there to help Nun, or he would have drowned in Eva's spit today. Today's conversation with my father didn't turn out so well, until Nun said he had a girlfriend, which barely made it over the line. As for the two lucky ones chosen, they are the administrators of the Cole and Nun CP threats. Nun's quick to react to the idea of impersonating his girlfriend. Over here, Koshiro and Essen finally subside after a fierce battle. The moment the mask is lifted, Essen realizes it's Koshiro who's back. 
Koshiro's temperament has changed drastically as he wants Koshiro to stay, but meets with Koshiro's unrelenting refusal. The Koshiro of today is not the same Koshiro that was once full of Asin, and Asin has to be ready to take it in order to completely remove his father's doubts. Nun approached the two administrators and asked them to help him. This time, although the lying thing is not good, but the thought of playing a couple scenario with the CP they manage, they feel very exciting. The two joyfully agree to Nun's request and stop by for dinner. As soon as Kato got home after work, he lay down on his bed. He was really tired. Eva served Kato the freshly squeezed shoes to treat the hard-working boyfriend. She was afraid that her boyfriend was hungry and rushed to make another sandwich. But by the time Eva was done, Kato was asleep. Eva stared at Kato's quiet face and suddenly changed her mind. Eva contacted Mr. Fan and put off that very important meeting. After all, in Eva's heart, it's still Kato that's a little more important. Cole hasn't been in the best of moods these past two days because of what happened to Nan's father. So he chooses to come to a nightclub to vent and asks Alan to join him in the hope that he can't get drunk. Koshiro and his boyfriend sit in a relatively quiet corner and drink. For Alice misses Koshiro a little bit after such a long time. At this point, Asin is still messaging Koshiro all the time, saying he misses him, and Koshiro ignores it all. When he hears Farouz ask if he can't stay with him tonight, Koshiro quickly agrees and pets Farouz's head. Nun has gotten rid of his father, but he can't reach Cole, who must have gone off on his own again. Koshiro sees that Cole is almost drunk, so he asks Alan to help get him home. Drinking so much alcohol, Cole was unsurprisingly late for work the next day, still in front of the company's leaders. At this rate, Cole's probationary period will be difficult to pass. Luckily, Alan was there to play along with the team, and Cole was able to pull off a shocking upset this time around. In between jobs, Nun and Cole each take their fake girlfriends to meet their parents. As soon as Papa Cole and Papa Nun meet, they start disliking each other again, and occasions with them are never quiet. Nun's dad is finally a bit relieved to see Nun leading his girlfriend. Cole's mom senses that her son and his girlfriend seem to be getting along a bit awkwardly and pretends to drop something to look under the table to see Cole and Nun pinching each other's thighs, which is what real couples do to each other. Cole's mom got it instantly, and it looks like her son came out of the closet on this one. Nun's idea worked, convincing his father that he's definitely straight. Cole is also finally able to move back into their nest, but he's not very happy about it. Cole thinks it's not a good idea for Nun to be so evasive all the time, and an underground relationship can feel really bad. Cole joked about going public with their relationship, and just as she was about to send out the dynamic, Nun grabbed her phone, only to see that it was visible only to herself. Nun was instantly a little embarrassed. The violent reaction made Cole even more upset, viciously flinging the water from his shirt onto Nun before relieving himself. In the dessert store, Joyce and Michi call who have just finished pretending to be girlfriends, are having a good time, and Michiko thinks that Joyce and Cole's interaction is a little too much and a little pretentious, but Joyce is feeling self-conscious and proud that she practiced for hours to get there. Michiko says she's speechless and hopes the sister won't be swept off her feet by meeting a real-life CP. The camera arrives at Eva's house, where she is explaining to Mr. Fawn why she can't go to the interview. It's just that the word lover came up in the conversation between these two leading Fifi to give the other side a general lecture. Eva was made to laugh and cry by this naive roommate, and quickly explained to her that the two were joking. Nun gets another call from his father urging him to make sure he gets along with Michi Call. He's really really worried about Nun's sexuality. A plate of Kato sees this and breaks into a cold sweat over his best friend's love. Michi Call asks Joyce to come out to the movies with her, only to be stood up. Joyce, at this time, is playing happily at Cole's house. As soon as Cole arrives home, she hears the sound of her family's cheerful laughter, and when the people come out, Cole realizes it's Joyce who has arrived. The father asks them to walk the dog together while he went to buy some groceries. Joyce seduces Cole in various unmoving ways while walking her dog. This is the first time that Cole, who used to be a straight man, could not hold on, but it is lucky that Cole's father appeared in time, otherwise Cole would have been embarrassed today. Wow, does this count as none leading the wolf into the house? Will Joyce's seduction add twists and turns to their relationship and will Cole, who has had girlfriends before, be able to resist the temptation? The two spend a nice afternoon together, coached by Cole's dad. When Cole gets home at night with a full stomach, he realizes that Nun has also prepared a meal for himself. This time, he'll have to live up to Nun's feelings for the time being. Kato still hasn't figured out what he's going to say to Eva, so he takes refuge with Nun. But coincidentally, Eva also happens to come to talk to both of them tonight. Seeing that the war is about to go to his head, Nun rushes to call for an explanation of Kato's presence in his house. Eva angrily called out Kato, who was still in the bathroom. I can't feel Kato's fear through the screen. 
Kao rushes to apologize for not being able to go on the tour. In fact, Eva is more concerned about Kato dragging his feet than Kato being cool with his appointment. At the bar, Asen looks at the singing Koshiro on stage with an admiring look on his face and a sense of missing out on a treasure. Asen seems to be trending for the better, with two men offering to throw themselves at him, both of which Asen rejects unceremoniously. Early the next morning, Koshiro comes to have breakfast with Furounds. Furounds was in a hurry, but he didn't forget to say I love you to Koshiro. Koshiro looks at Furao's innocent face and realizes that he can't say the words I love you too. It seems that a lot of things were foretold. Cole is just moping around all day at his current company and is embarrassed by what Alan says. Alan asks Kato to take himself to Cole, who has to do some coaching on the tech work. After arriving at the scene, he found that Cole really in the operation of many problems. He went straight up to hold Cole's hand, personally teaching. Cole thought it was a little odd, but didn't think much of it, given the other person's status as a superior. But Kato who is on the outside, can see that something is wrong, and Alan's closeness to Cole seems a bit intentional. Eva greeted Mr. Fan in a joking way as usual, only to find out that his girlfriend is here. Eva hurriedly explained to prove the innocence of her relationship with Mr. Fan. Mr. Fan's girlfriend was also generous and did not bother with Eva. After her girlfriend leaves, Mr. Fan tells Eva the good news, he will give Eva a high-level project. Now, Eva's admiration for Mr. Fan has deepened. Then Mr. Fawn took Eva to meet a client. The other party was very satisfied with their design and the project was successfully taken over. It was Eva's first time to be in charge of a first-class project. She was so excited that she hugged Mr. Fan. When Eva calmed down, she remembered who she was hugging and hurriedly spread her arms. As a result, another unsteady stand. She was directly embraced by Mr. Fan. Si mu xian du a, shi yao gao shi qing de jia zou a. Or Mr. Fang reacts first and decides to take Eva to dinner to celebrate. Eva may be a little bit unlucky today. Not walking a few steps heel broke again. Just as Eva was fretting, Mr. Fong brought over a pair of his girlfriend's shoes and thoughtfully put them on for Eva. What's with the ambiguity? At night when she goes to bed, Cole receives a good night from Joyce. With the cumin of a former girlfriend, Cole senses that something is off about Joyce. Cole tries to discuss it with Nun, but Nun is just too deep in sleep to wake up, so Cole has to deal with it on his own. The next morning, Nun is awakened by his alarm clock and realizes that Cole is surprisingly not in bed. The Cole is not sleeping all night because of the Joyce incident. Cole is upset again over Nun's reluctance to go public, the two get up early in the morning and have a bit of a falling out, and it's only thanks to Nun's wit that the two are brought back from the brink of a fight. <laughs> On the other hand, Asen and Koshiro had another passionate night last night. In the morning, the two continue to interact sweetly, only Asen has other things to do, before he left. Koshiro borrowed his car. Next, drama ensues. Koshiro picks up his current boyfriend in his ex-boyfriend's car, and Furouse is still very happy about it. Although I waited for Koshiro all night for nothing, he came to pick himself up early in the morning with all his heart. Eva was working from home today, and Fifi asked about how it went with her and Kato's trip earlier. One look at Eva's disappointed eyes. Fifi knew it was probably hopeless. Fifi immediately sent a mockery from a friend. The two chatted, and the topic came to Mr. Fan. Just at the mention of Mr. Fan, Eva's face turns red and then Eva finds herself unable to concentrate on her work. And at this moment, Mr. Fan is sitting in front of his office, missing Eva just the same. At the factory, Cole yawns, the aftermath of an all-night gaming session. Cole is now so intent on sleeping that he doesn't even notice the work truck driving by in front of him. Luckily, none pulls him back just in time, or Cole's life might not have been saved. The incident was soon made known to the higher-ups. Ellen criticizes Cole severely in the office, but Cole is not in the spirit even in the face of the leader's criticism, and almost falls asleep in front of Alan. Alan is helpless and doesn't know how much longer he can't take care of him. Cole made such a big mistake and was not penalized for it. Some workers feel that it is very unfair. None heard some bad comments, but with the principle that more is better than less. None didn't bother with them much. During the break, none buys Cole a cup of coffee to refresh herself. Cole, however, feels that none is ashamed of himself. That too, who disagreed, soon quarreled again. After work, Alan asks the two to go swimming together. After work, Cole hasn't come out to play for a long time. He had a pretty good time today, in conjunction with Cole's behavior over the past two days. Alan asks Cole if she doesn't like her job here very much. Nun listens thinking it's the leader testing the employee and immediately starts making excuses for Cole. But before Nun can say anything, Cole admits it. Cole said he didn't really want to be here and chose to stay just to work with Nun and spend more time together. Nun realizes that Cole chose this company because of himself and he has a feeling that he forced Cole to do it, and gets a little upset. In the end, it was Alan who came out to talk things out, 
and the atmosphere between them eased a little. On the other hand, Farouz has been waiting at Koshiro's house for a long time and still no sign of Koshiro. Fifi symbolically comes out to care about her roommate's state, only to see Farouz blinking his big bright eyes and asking Fifi if there's someone outside of Koshiro. This poor little look is heartbreaking to anyone who looks at it. Farouz was going to go with Fifi to catch the adulterer, but ended up being afraid of making Koshiro angry that way. In the end, Farouz chooses to stay home and wait for Koshiro to return. While Farouz waits for Koshiro, Koshiro arrives at Asin's house, but he's not here for passion this time. He's here to report to Asin that his car has been rear-ended. After apologizing, Koshiro leaves. Asin's heart is bleeding as he looks at the tragic state of his beloved car. Thus, the first step of Koshiro's revenge was successfully accomplished. The next morning, Cole wakes up and realizes she's going to be late. While Nun is all calm and ready to go out, Cole immediately realizes that Nun is still mad at him for what he said last night. Until they arrive at the office, Nun is still gambling. Kato finds Eva and tells her that her work schedule has been changed and that her travel plans can't continue. However, instead of showing excitement, Eva regretfully tells Kato that she already has an interview scheduled and can't postpone it this time. Kato can't only accept that, after all, he was the one who didn't communicate with Eva in advance. Eva arrives at Mr. Fong's studio and finds that he still has a piece unfinished, so she went straight to work and ended up with a handful of underread paint. Mr. Fan saw this and immediately helped Eva wash her hands himself. Eva realizes that Mr. Fan's face is also stained with paint, and when she washes her hands, she gently wipes the paint off for Mr. Fan. This action is extremely intimate, drawing the two closer together. Fan looks a little frowncy. Cole is focused on the couch playing a game, and Nun figures that Cole shouldn't be mad at him anymore, so he cheekily asks Cole to take himself along for the ride. Cole doesn't care. After all, it was Nun who was mean to him at the factory and he's still very upset about it. But really, Cole is more concerned about Nun's unwillingness to come clean with his parents. And once that's settled, everything will be fine for the two. But Nun just doesn't dare, so Cole has no choice but to rush him. During this time, Joyce has been contacting Cole about Nun not taking him seriously. Cole had to come to a good friend to counsel him. Fifi and Eva identified each other as fake CP fans on the spot after reading the message Joyce sent. Joyce, an imposter girlfriend, has a tendency to want to be on top. Eva is doing Fifi's makeup to help her find the right job for her soon. While Eva goes to answer the phone, Fifi advises Cole not to push too hard or it will backfire. Fifi, the one who hasn't talked much about relationships, seems to be the one who knows the most about them. After applying makeup to Fifi, Eva made her way to the first floor lobby. Mr. Fan has been waiting for her for a long time. When Eva went to the studio earlier, her clothes were stained by the paint from Mr. Fan's sculpture. Today, he is here specifically to deliver new clothes. Eva a burst of excuses, but finally accepted the gift of Mr. Fen. The two didn't talk for long before Mr. Feng left. Now that he's getting calls from his girlfriend, he doesn't feel as happy as he does when he's spending time with Eva. Eva accompanied Kato to swim and take pictures to remember. Kato is tired of swimming and comes to the poolside to chat with Eva. When Kato can help but try to kiss Eva, Eva's head is thinking about Mr. Fen. This scared Eva herself backing away and getting up to leave Kato. Bichi Ka has recently noticed that Joyce is flipping out, so she makes an excuse to detach her to get herself some water. While Joyce is away, Bichi Ka flips through Joyce's phone and finds that Joyce is actually ready to post a picture of herself and Cole together. This is not what a CP fan should do. Bichi Ka immediately deleted the picture and fled the scene. By the time Joyce returned, the building was empty. At night, Nun decides to call his parents, and Ben confesses his relationship with Cole. However, Nun's dad directly preempted the issue by stating that if Nun was going to say something about homosexuality, he wouldn't agree with it anyway. Nun watched helplessly as the phone hung up. Left and right, on one side is a lover, on the other side is a relative. It is difficult for him to make a choice. His love for Cole is real and will never change, but he can't help but take his father's thoughts into consideration. What will Nun do when he is in a dilemma? The next day, Nun arrives at the factory and Cole is again pestered by Gerd about the shady tactics he used to get his food in the door at his current job. As soon as he hears this, Cole gets antsy, but before he can do anything, Nun punches Gerd straight in the face from behind, and the scene is thrown into chaos for a moment. It wasn't until Alan stepped in that the drama was stopped. Alan seeks out Nun for a private heart-to-heart, -heart, sensing that Nun is not in the right state, presumably from another fight with Cole. Nun says he did his best to do what Cole asked of him but Cole just doesn't understand himself. Alan calms Nun down by telling him that love can't be reasoned away. After work, everyone gathered together as usual. Fifi shows off the new products she's developed, and she's getting better at her craft. 
Nun asks Kato for help because he really can reach Cole. At first, Kato is reluctant to get involved with the two of them, but can't stand Nun's softballing and eventually calls Cole. Nun comes to inform Cole that Alan has asked them both to dinner tonight and not to be late. Cole stated that he had other things to do and would not go. The friends breathed a collective sigh of relief when these desulking people finally spoke to each other. What is so urgent? Cole has decided to come clean with her parents. Cole made a special trip to see his parents about this. Originally, it was with great trepidation that he thought his parents would scold him. As it turned out, Cole's parents weren't as curmudgeonly as he thought they were, and accepted the fact with open arms. Perhaps Cole had unintentionally hinted at this before and prepared the parents for it. Cole can't help but be red-eyed at the sight of her parents looking out for her so much. And the end result of Alan's meal is that none goes alone, because Kato decides to stay home with Eva. Kato can't afford to share a relaxing night out. Nun thought it was Alan's birthday and prepared a special gift. As a result of going, he realizes that today is the day Alan's ex-subject left. The tone is instantly sad, quickly overshadowing the awkwardness of Nun's gift given. As the two chat, Nun realizes that Alan speaks in a gentle voice, a tone that is so soft compared to Cole. Drinking makes easy mistakes, and with Alan's intentional teasing, the two soon interact intensely. When Nun comes to his senses, he realizes he has made a big mistake. Nun got up from the bed, lifted up his pants, and made a run for it. As soon as Nun arrived home, Cole immediately came out to greet him with a smile, knowing that Nun must have had too much to drink last night. He thoughtfully poured water for him. Today's Cole is quite the wife and mother. Cole surprises Nun with the news that he has come clean with his parents, but Nun didn't seem as happy as he thought he would be. At this point the naive Cole thought that it was because he had not rested well, but Nun went into the bathroom, looked at herself in the mirror, and burst into tears. Why didn't you control yourself last night? Koshiro and Asun are interacting sweetly in the bathroom. Asun tries to get Koshiro to clear the air with his boyfriend, but Koshiro feels that the time is not right, and Koshiro says that it is up to him to decide whether Asun stays or goes. If Asun wants to leave, he's not going to stand in the way. Asun can let go of Koshiro in the end, so let him. At the company, Nun is now all kinds of defensive about Cole and Alan meeting alone, but that's not something Nun can control. After getting the design drawings back from Alan, Nun asks Cole what the two of them talked about. Cole frowns a bit at his reaction. I have to say, Nun's weakness is showing too much. Alan came to talk to them for a while during lunchtime, but Nun didn't look at Alan for a second the whole time. Keo sees something is wrong, and while Cole goes to get water, Kato asks Nun if something is going on between him and Alan. Nun had a hard time working up the courage to try to talk to Kato when Cole came back, and the conversation ended for the time being. In the afternoon at work, Nun finds an opening and tells Kato that he's being perverse because he accidentally had sex with Alan. Kato scolds Nun, but for the sake of his best friend's happiness, Kato decides to hide it for Nun for the time being. Eva is wearing a new dress bought by Mr. Fang and has come with him to complete a certain project, but the project leader is not very reliable and just keeps them waiting. The two of them are bored, so Mr. Fang brings Eva to a room designed by his friend. Eva was attracted to good design when she saw it and kept talking to Mr about how ingenious the design of a certain building was, but now Mr. Fan's attention is not on the design, it's on Eva. Mr. Fan looked at Eva with deep affection, and finally Eva did not hold back and kiss her. At school, Joris is wondering why Cole isn't answering any of her messages. Then she received a picture that made her quite excited. She couldn't wait to put this photo online with the caption uncheated. This time, Michika doesn't have time to intercept before the picture goes viral. This photo was taken by Alan while Nun was gone and then sent to Joyce. Fifi, who was sitting at home playing with her cell phone, also saw the picture and was quite shocked. Joyce rushes to Cole's house as fast as she can, and before she even enters, she starts yelling at Nun for being a bad man. Cole is still wondering when Nun messed with Joyce, then Joyce blurts out that Nun cheated on her. Cole doesn't believe it until Joyce pulls out the picture, and Cole knows it must be true. Nun tried to explain that he was angry that day, and that he had been drinking too much that day and didn't have control. But no matter how you explain it, Nun is getting worse because cheating is a fact. Nun's father comes in again just as the two men are pulling at each other. After hearing the conversation between the two, Nun's dad doesn't understand anything else about the relationship between the two of them. Nun's father, who can accept this fact, suffers a heart attack on the spot, making the already chaotic situation even more out of control. At this point, Eva has also returned home, and Kato has been waiting for her for a long time. He had come today specifically to give Eva new clothes, and he hadn't realized that Eva already had new ones. So as soon as we got paid today, Kato went and got it for her. Eva is a little overwhelmed by looking at such a considerate boyfriend. Just when things are getting a little awkward, 
Fifi rushes out and says something about none cheating on her. Kato, who has been informed of the events in advance, knows that there is no way to hide this. At night, Cole and Nun sit down to negotiate. Both are in pain right now, one betrayed by her lover and the other afraid of her lover leaving. Cole cries as he works up the courage to come clean with his family, and it turns out Nun is in a relationship with another man. Nun knows that he is out of his depth on this one, and keeps apologizing to Cole, but Cole isn't going to back down this time and breaks up. The best thing about being betrayed is that you have to break up. Nun can't hear about the breakup, and goes up to Cole and hugs him tightly. The tears that had just stopped welled up again, and he cried that no matter what, he wouldn't break up with Cole. But this time, Cole is really sad. Nun can't get a hold of Cole, and this time even his friends have no choice but to tell Nun to calm down a bit more. Fifi accuses Nun of cheating on her and Nun can only choose to remain silent. The thing that makes Fifi feel perverse is that Eva is on Nun's side this time, and at this moment Cole, who is shopping for eyeglasses, pays for them when he suddenly remembers the scene where Nun gave him the money. You can't tell that Cole can't let go now. Eva went back to the bedroom to answer the phone. It was Mr. Phone. Eva wasn't sure, yet, how she felt about the other side always. She just wanted to be quiet now. After handing up, Eva realizes Kato is right behind her and rushes to digress about Nun and Cole. Eva asks Kato what would happen to Kato if she made a mistake too. Kato states directly that he believes Eva would never betray love. It made Eva feel even more guilty. Nun arrives at Cole's house and is told by his parents that Cole has not returned. Nun's trip not only fails to find Cole, but also causes trouble for Cole's parents. While Nun is talking to Cole's parents, Nun's dad pops up and he makes all kinds of snide remarks about Cole's dad. In short, it's taking out all his anger at his son for being gay on Cole's dad. Nun thinks his father is going too far, stating that the person can't be a girl, if not a Cole. Nun's dad is furious and spills the beans on Nun's cheating. Cole's parents now realize that their son has been wronged, and in an instant, Nun's image in their minds is in tatters. In the evening, Cole comes to Alan and asks him to elaborate on what happened that night. Alan seems to have been advising Cole on the surface, but has been stirring up trouble. Alan stated that Nun was sober that night, and that Nun said a lot of things to complain about Cole. Cole was in a very upset mood when he heard this. Alan sees the moment and tries to take Cole down as well. As a result, Cole keeps her wits about her and rejects Alan's advances. Even when she's in the throes of anger, Eva finally reaches out to Cole and advises him to give Nun another chance and be more understanding. Cole wonders about Eva's current stance and feels that forgiving someone who betrayed is really necessary. So he hangs up and leaves Eva to contemplate life by the pool. Meanwhile, Furaus comes to see Koshiro, who senses that the recent cheating on Nun has caused a lot of tension in the apartment. Koshiro realizes that Furaus has a fever and immediately takes him to the hospital. By chance, Furaus was scheduled to check in with the sin. After the inspection, Furaus asked Koshiro to step outside for a moment. Stating that there was something he wanted to talk to Asin about alone, Furaus takes Asin's hand and opens their conversation. On the other hand, Mr. Fan asks Eva to come out for dinner, but Eva's attitude towards Mr. Fan suddenly becomes cold, making Mr. Fan a bit uncomfortable. Eva feels that the relationship the two of them are in now is unfair to both of their significant others and wants to stop it in time. But Mr. Fong says he doesn't want to let go. He thinks he's in love with Eva and that he has no love left for his current girlfriend. When Mr. Fang asks Eva rhetorically if she loves herself. Eva answers and leaves the restaurant directly. Eva went back and cried all night. Fifi, confused, rushes to call Kato to inform him of Eva's anomaly. Fifi runs into Fang in the hallway and instantly recognizes it as Eva's boss. So when the other guy asked to take him to see Eva, Fifi agreed without much thought. With great difficulty, Mr. Fang desperately wants to talk to Eva, but Eva says she has nothing to say and asks him to leave. Seeing Eva's strong attitude, Mr. Fang is also embarrassed to stay all the time. From their conversation, Fifi also heard that something was not right between the two of them. The camera arrives at the office, and Kato and Nun pass their probationary period. But Cole does not. It just so happens that Cole is here today to hand in his resignation letter, and he doesn't want to stay with Nun for a while. Nun begs Cole not to leave, but now Nun's pleas don't carry much weight with Cole. After Cole leaves, Alan comes back to screw things up. He says that Cole wants to have sex with himself to get back at Nun. But he righteously refuses. The ability to turn black and white upside down is really no one. Kato comes to take care of Eva and runs into Mr. Fang in the hallway. As the saying goes, the two are putting words into each other's mouths when they meet their rivals. Though it may not sound like an offensive word, it does demonstrate to each other. And at this moment, Eva is explaining to Fifi about the relationship between her and Mr. Fan. But Fifi says that she doesn't want to be involved in this matter and that Eva should just figure out what to say to Kato. Seeing Kato arrive, 
Fifi has the good sense to leave the field to them. Kato gently asks Eva what's wrong and why she cried all night. Eva stammered for most of the day, finally summoned up the courage to say what was in her heart. She may like Mr. Fan. At Eva's words, Kato's mind went blank. He subconsciously thinks Eva is joking. However, Eva tells him that it's true. Eva tried to explain more to him. But Kato just got up and slammed the door. Back at her house, Kato let her heart out. Fifi is about to be pissed off at her friends, who are so irresponsible with their relationships. Koshiro is also quite shocked to learn that Eva cheated on him. It's really not like Eva to do that. However, Koshiro quickly recovers from the shock and says that he understands Eva and that she might be in some kind of distress. Because of this, Koshiro and Fifi had another fight. Good, a co-worker at the company who previously looked down on Cole, is found to have made a major mistake at work. He was first reprimanded by Alan, then he accidentally hurt his eye himself. As Gerd is rushed to the hospital, Alan mutters that the man can't stay with the company. It seems that this is not that simple. Koshiro got a message from Farouk saying he couldn't make it tonight because of something. Koshiro was just in time to ask Asan out. As a result, Asan also said he had something to do. Well, it looks like Koshiro is going to be lonely all night. He calls Farouk to send his boyfriend's concern. But instead he hears the sound of a hospital. Koshiro was instantly nonplussed. Didn't Farouk get better? After work, none comes to see Kato. None already knows about Eva. He came to the room and saw no one. So scared he thought Kato had jumped. Luckily, Kato's only gone for a little while. None was relieved to see someone. None's heart aches at the sight of Kato's braced face. At last, with none's comfort, Kato finally cries out all the pain he's been holding in his heart. The first time I saw this, it was a very good thing that I was able to see it. A good couple is facing this one problem of cheating at the same time. The betrayal of their loved ones is the greatest pain for them. Can they reunite and get out of the haze of this cheating? What will happen to the two couples? Cole's first reaction to knowing about Eva's cheating was also shock. Plus, having just been cheated on herself recently, Cole's reaction was slightly greater. Koshiro advises Cole not to hold on to Nun's momentary mistakes and to think about how good Nun has been to Cole. And maybe, this is a mistake that Cole will be able to forgive. Fifi couldn't hear it from the sidelines. She couldn't take this Koshiro talk anyway. Fifi prepares some food for Eva and to show that she's still mad at Eva. Fifi pretends that Koshiro brought it to Eva, but Eva comes out and sees the cake and knows that Fifi prepared it. Christmas is here, and of the bunch, Farouz is the only one with a playful mind. Everyone else is bitter. Farouz has been chatting up whoever he's been talking to lately, and it's making Koshiro uneasy. While Farouz went to tease the others, Koshiro hurriedly rummaged through his cell phone with no luck. Cole and Nun come for the drawings at the same time. And as they look at each other, Koshiro's words ring in Cole's ears. This time, instead of deliberately ostracizing Nun, Cole tells him that the two of them will talk after work. Nun senses a change in Cole, and it looks like he's one step closer to being forgiven. In the office, Kato is exchanging work with Alan. From Kato's somber expression, Alan could tell something was on his mind. Then Alan pretended to be a big brother and comforted Kato. It's just that if Alan wants to talk, he should talk. What's with the touching of Kato's hand? Alan teaches Kato to be aware of the times and to be obedient to himself, in order to have a chance to do well in the company, Kato outwardly agrees with Alan, but as soon as he turns his head, Kato changes his face, after work, Alan calls Nun alone in the name of work, as it turns out, by the time Nun enters the office, Alan is in the middle of changing clothes and appears disheveled, after Nun sits down, Alan drops something again, looks everywhere, and ends up burrowing right under the table, looking back and forth from where Nun Saturday down, the two of them were in a very evocative pose when Cole came in, this time, Cole is really angry. After agreeing to talk about it after work, Cole is just about to try to forgive when Nun starts making mistakes. Another misunderstanding created by Alan, which screws Nun over. Kato returns home and finds Eva lying asleep on the couch, thinking that she should have waited for her for a long time. By the time Eva woke up the next morning, Kato had already prepared breakfast. Kato says that no matter what happened between Eva and Mr. Fang before, as long as Eva still loves Kato, Kato can pretend that nothing happened. Eva, though reluctant to part with it, knew that it was time for her to make a choice. Eva politely breaks up and gives Kato the ring he once gave her. Back to Kato, and Cole moves out of Nun's house. Looking at the empty closet, Nun got a little scared. Cole comes to check in with his parents, repeatedly telling them not to tell Nun about his whereabouts. Cole's parents were relieved to see that he was okay. In order to get her mood back a little sooner, Cole decides to take a break at the beach. Kato comes to Mr. Fong and confronts him about why he is messing with Eva when he has a girlfriend. Instead, Mr. Fong asks Kato how good Kato was to Eva even when Eva was in a relationship with him. When the two sides were arguing, Mr. 
Fan's girlfriend came and they stopped arguing. Kato made a random excuse to hide the truth. Gert is discharged from the hospital, but Alan doesn't recognize his injury as a workplace injury, and Gert is asked to pay for the damage to the machine. Gert is furious and argues directly with Alan, but he is a small staff. Naturally, Khan not fight Alan, so the angry Gert can only find other people out of anger, and the first target is none. Luckily Kato shows up just in time to stop the two from trying to fight. Cole misses none too much in the last two days and always thinks of him even when she's staying in a hotel. None is no different, often gawking at the familiar room, her mind remembering how sweet it once was when the two were together. On the other hand, Alan has recently set his sights on Kato, creating opportunities for the two to be alone in the name of work. Even going to the bathroom, he's all about seducing Kato. Luckily for us, Kato, the straight man of steel, isn't so easily seduced. On the other hand, Eva comes to the library to study and quiet her mind, but it doesn't take long for Fang to sit across the table. Without saying a word, he pulled Eva outside. Eva just like that, was pulled by Mr. Fang to his girlfriend. The first time I saw her was when she was a little girl, and she was a little girl, and she was a little girl. Eva felt that Mr. Fang did this and made her very uncomfortable and left the restaurant angrily. Nun borrows Koshiro's car and looks around for Cole, but half a day had passed and he still had no clue. Nun is getting annoyed. When Gert comes out looking for trouble again, stopping Nun from leaving and insisting on arguing with him. As a result, Nun pushed too hard and drove his car into a wall. Nun was rushed to the hospital and his friends were anxious. Nun's parents rush over and when Nun comes out, Nun's dad realizes that Nun is only slightly injured. The doctor advises Nun to get a full workup, but Nun feels he can't delay, finding Cole any longer and tries to leave the hospital right away. And it's only at the insistence of Nun's dad that Nun listens to the doctor. After this incident, Nun's dad also figured it out and agreed to Nun and Cole continuing their relationship. The family is sitting happily chatting when Nun receives a consumer text message. Nun looked at the message as a hotel booking billing information. People instantly excited. This is money well spent. Cole is not far away. The friends all get a text from Nun and decide to go along for the ride to see the young couple's reunion in its entirety. At this moment, Cole who has no idea about these things, is in a luxurious room, complaining about how Nun is moving so slowly and why he hasn't come to find himself yet. A depressed Cole decides to open the window for some air. As a result, just after pulling back the curtains, he was startled by Nun's head. Go, who had just been ranting about why her boyfriend wasn't coming, immediately changed her face and arrogantly stated that she just wouldn't let Nun in the door. It turned out that the knocking stopped after a while, Cole still wondering if Nun just left. The next second, he was being hugged from behind by Nun and had no idea how he got in. Then Nun started to cheekily apologize, pamper and force kisses, one after the other. Cole forgave him long ago and quickly accepted Nun's apology. Then the young couple, who haven't been together for a long time, quickly kick off a night of fighting. The next day, the friends waited outside for a long time, did not see the young couple get up, so they decided to go together to see the battle. As expected, the young couple did not fail to live up to everyone's expectations. And early in the morning, they did physical work. Luckily, at the crucial moment, Nun saw the people standing outside the window and stopped, or else he might have to go out and get flirted with by them in some way. At the same time, Nun remembers that drawing the curtains is a good habit. But even so, the young couple is still being trolled by everyone. Eva's camera ran out of battery, and she had to go back to her room to recharge it. Nun hurriedly eyed Kato, hurrying to keep up. Kato returns to the room with Eva and shows Eva the video he made. Looking at what they used to be, Eva admits that she's gone soft. Eva says she still loves Kato, but she can't forgive herself for a while, so please give her some more time. The two haven't made up, but their relationship isn't as awkward as it was before. On the other hand, Koshiro followed Furouns to a room, and sure enough Asin was in it, listening to the increasingly explicit conversation inside. Koshiro couldn't help himself and rushed right in. It turns out the two were just having a normal conversation. As he spoke, Furouns pushed Koshiro into Asin's arms. In fact, all Furouns has done lately is help Koshiro see himself. He personally pushed Koshiro to Asin. Furouns pretends to be strong and has a fun dinner with everyone, but Asun can't help himself and runs wildly on the beach, discovering the sadness inside him. At night, Nan and Cole lie in bed playing a game. Now that they've made up, the two need to clear up any previous misunderstandings. After a conversation, the two realize that Alan has been stirring up trouble between them. To teach Alan a lesson, Cole decides to fix him up. They both post about the breakup and the CP threat at the same time as a first step to get Alan on board. The CP fans, led by Michi Ko, are breaking their hearts at the moment. When they leave the next day, Nun tells Kato about the plan and asks Kato to play along with the two of them to put on a show. Soon enough, 
Alan takes the bait. After going back to work, Nun approached Alan to complain about his problems, and Alan, who was still reprimanding Nun for missing work without a reason, immediately consoled him. The intent to sow discord is clear enough, with every comment disparaging Cole. Eva and Fifi can't help but wonder, after listening to what Alan said, are all men so strong in battle now? Eva is now the confident person she once was. If Cole needed someone to step up, Eva would definitely be the first choice. In the company, Alan is washing his hands, when Nun suddenly enters topless and seductively washing up. Alan gulped as he looked at Nun's stunning body. From this side he comes out, and he ends up seeing, again, Kata washing clothes topless. Today Alan's luck is really great. Two beautiful men's perfect bodies are seen by themselves. Alan makes a move on Kato, and this time Kato doesn't say no. Alan thinks Kato has thought things through and wants to use himself to move up the ladder, fantasizing that he's raided another beautiful man. On the other hand, Cole and Nun's parents meet up on the road and were expecting another big fight, only to find out that the other party actually agrees with the kids. Papa Cole was, for a moment, surprisingly uncomfortable. Cole comes to Gert and brings him evidence that Gert has not failed in his duties. Gert had wanted to fight with him, but he didn't realize that his opponent had come to make a gesture of goodwill. In the evening, Koshiro joins the young couple at the bar to share their results. As a result, Koshiro discovers a person suspected to be Alan's late ex-boyfriend on social media apps. After the interconnection of the videos, it was found that they were indeed not mistaken. Things are starting to get interesting. Eva is on her way back from her morning run. Listening to Fifi report on her oddball interview, the result is that when she looks up, Eva sees Mr. Fan. Eva and Mr. Fan made their stance clear and said they would not pick him no matter what. Mr. Fan is also completely dead this time. In the company, Alan comes to Kato excitedly, saying that he has reported Kato's excellent work to his superiors, which means that what was promised to him has been accomplished and it's time for Kato to give himself the benefit of the doubt. At different times, he asked Kato, Ko and Nun out. Fantasizing about a colorful evening, I have to say, Ellen, can your body really take it? Kato learns from Mr. Fong that he and Eva are not having a relationship, which is really good news for Kato. Fifi's side knew it too, and breathed a similar sigh of relief. The night went on as planned, but the situation has changed. Kato and the gang come straight up together, to relieve themselves and beat the crap out of Ellen. After they leave, Ellen's nominal ex-boyfriend comes to the door, having been rumored to have passed away, and needs to be compensated for it. Kato returned home and filed the paperwork to report Alan to headquarters. The next day, when Alan arrives at work, he finds that everyone is against him. Gerd also got evidence of his forgery. Now, not only does Alan not get anyone, he can even keep his job. Alan's affairs come to an end and everyone's life returns to normal. One day, Cole changes into a new pair of glasses. A stealth, defeated look that gives Nun an instant look. Nun and Cole have a passionate scene together in broad daylight. After all this time, Everyone is finally together again. Fifi has found a job and everyone is happy for her. But Fifi may have to live abroad a lot in the future, so she won't be able to get together with everyone as often. Kato and Eva aren't back together yet, but Eva is already trying to reconcile with herself. Koshiro is also back to his once innocent self, with the difference that Asin treats him wholeheartedly this time. The day goes on as usual, Cole is still as bedridden as ever, and the money is still being spent as fast as ever. Nun still takes care of every aspect of Cole's life, but they appreciate each other a little more than before. Well, that's all for today. The God of Love is always more favorable to those who give their heart to each other. This is the end of today's commentary. We'll see you next time.